Good morning everybody, Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video and today we're going to kick off tier list making in 2022 by talking about UR tanks in War of the Visions. Joom has just come out, I compared her to Engelbert in my preview video and I got a ton of different comments uh, by a ton of different people all saying I compared her to the wrong tank, I could have, I should have compared her to, you know, X tank or Y tank and it's interesting because everybody's opinion was different so either everybody's I don't know I figure the thing to do here is just let's talk about UR tanks in general in this game right now and I'm going to talk about them through the format of making a little tier list so this is the January 2020 War of the Visions UR tank tier list now baby J has something he would like to say about this tier list before we get started so I'm going to throw it over to him real quick Oh man, that was really insightful, Baby J. Thank you for that lovely commentary on the state of UR tanks. Now, if you didn't understand what he was saying, what Baby J said is like, we need to narrow down the tanking field a little bit. And in his opinion and mine, I share it, I think there's only about 10 tanks, 10 UR tanks in the global game. And let me put those on the screen right here for you. So here's the tier maker, and here's what I've narrowed it down to. Notice what's not on this list is basically all of what Earth element units are. Earth is full of these units that like, yes, if you run them in the right sub, they can be bruisers that can generate hate and do a lot of damage. But units like Kilfay, I don't think are meant to be tanks. So I'm not including them on here. I want to talk about units here that are like tanks. Tanks in their soul. You know what I mean? So these are the 10 that I picked. And I drew, let me tell you where I drew the line. I drew the line at Dwayne. Dwayne only can generate hate through a support ability. He's almost in that high damage bruiser category, but because you can run him on whatever sub job you want, I decided that would be the thing I would like. Anyway, that's where I decided to draw the line. If you would have done it different, feel free to make your own tier list video. Go for it. Leave comments, whatever. I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. So let's go. These are in order of release, which means we start with Engelbert, somebody all over the game right now. Now, let me take you on a little journey with our boy Engelbert. When the game came out, Engelbert was right here. Yep, he was like, if you didn't have Engelbert in the first month of the game, you were behind. Then he just started falling off a cliff. He was too slow during times in the game when having agility meant everything. He had to cast Taunting Blade to gather hate, and that just killed him. But he has risen back up. In my opinion, he's risen all the way back up to an A-tier character. And let me show you why. I'm going to go over to Engelbert here. I'm going to go to his skills. Check it out. I think he got one of the greatest EX upgrades in the history of this game. First of all, Holy Knight's protection, which is a defense and uh, HP buff, also gave him more healing power, and he's a part of an element in Mono Light that is full of healing. So, great for him there. Fina and Yuna power him up. And then, his biggest change was Immortal Spirit got 12 hate added to it and another cast. This made him great for Guild Wars, great for Arena, great for everything. His hate generation gives him a bonus of being able to have the courage buff. It's super good. No longer does he just rely on um, Taunting Blade, which was super unreliable on him. So a super good EX upgrade. He is the god of physical tanking in this game right now. Boom, Engelbert, in my opinion, an A tier character. Okay, next up we have Whisper. Man, Whisper, guys, like I'm gonna throw Whisper into C. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on Whisper. I just don't think like, there, there was a time in this game when instead of seeing a lot of mono element teams, you saw a lot of mono attack type teams, or maybe at max like duo attack type teams. And there wasn't a lot of like slash resistance penetration or you know something along those lines. So Whisper had a better moment than she did now, but she's always been kind of a niche character. Her EX upgrade was nice to her, giving her access to protect and shell. But like, again, I'll go to her page here and I'll go to her skills. My biggest hit at Whisper, my thing I don't like about her the most, is to generate hate. You're forced to go all the way down here into her Spellblade sub job and force her to use Taunting Spell. And I mean force her to use Taunting Spell because it scales off of magic, which basically means you're going to lose access to all of these like cool breaks that her Knight's job has. Like Quadra Break is really, really cool, but it scales off of 120% attack. So if you're building attack and you want her to do this, that's cool, but she will, her AI will always choose to do that over generating hate because this will do more damage 
So that sucks. I just hate that about her. That's, that's like one of the biggest reasons I'm throwing her into C. I think she needs a little bit of love. I think she needs a little bit of love. Okay, next up, a unit that we've had in the game for a really long time, FFBE crossover unit, Rain. This one's not super easy for me to do. I'm going to throw Rain into B uh, right now. Like, I want the, like, I, I like Rain a lot. He's supposed to be the magic version of Engelbert, where Engelbert is just a god physical tank but sucks against magic. Rain was kind of supposed to be this, like, god magic tank who wasn't as good against physical. I think Rain is super, super usable right now. I still use him a lot, but let's be real. Maybe, maybe it's because fire is not as good of an element as light is right now in a time in this game when mono element is everywhere, but Rain against magic is not as good as Engelbert against physical. So because of that, I'm putting him into B. I do want to mention though, Rain does have one of the best hate generating skills in the game for a magic tank. Astral Guard is amazing. 12 hate generation, 30% magic shield for three turns, for three turns. So he can be hit 19 times in those three turns. He will reduce that damage by 30%. I really like that skill a ton, but it does force you into Knight of Grand Shell Flame, which prevents you from getting some more utility from like Red Mage or something like that. So that does hurt him. Engelbert gets his hate from his main job. Rain, you're forced to run into a sub job. That also knocks him down a little bit, in my opinion, and keeps him in that B tier range. Okay, next up, Fryevia. Now, guys, I know a lot of people still don't like Fryevia and don't believe me when I do this, but I'm putting Fryevia behind Engelbert but she is an A tier tank in my opinion. She is great against magic. She's decent against physical. She can heal. She has full life. Like, ice is also a pretty dang strong element. Fry Evie is really, really good, and you don't need to bring a healer with her. She kind of supports herself. Sometimes that gets her into trouble. If her AI was like 2000 IQ and she knew like when to generate hate, when to buffer defense and spirit, when to heal and full life. Oh my God, she'd be amazing. Instead, we have to rely on the AI, which is a troubling thing sometimes. And it keeps her from being like top, top tier, but her kit's really good. Like check out some of her skills, you guys. She has all of these resists that she can get from her support job, which is amazing. She has Spell Veil Blade, which is a stacking defense and spirit 20 buff that hits in an AOE at a nice range. That's really good. Attract Barrier is in her main job. It gives her 12 hate, 50% magic damage resistant three times. Amazing, amazing. She's insanely good against magic. I think she's a better version of like maybe what Rain kind of should have been. I don't know, they're different. They're both from FFBE. She's really good. Her white mage sub, which again, you're able to use because her hate generation is in her main job. Now it has full life in it. It has curata, shell protect. It's so many good things. So many good things. And if you want more hate, you can run her as Spellblade, where she does have access to taunting spell. Her whole kit scales off of magic. So taunting spell actually hits kind of hard. She's a really good unit. People are still sleeping on Fryevia in January of 2022. And those people are wrong in my opinion. Okay. Next up, we've got Warrior of Light. Now, Warrior of Light, okay, another story. Warrior of Light at one point was right here. Warrior of Light at one point was the god of tanking in this game before EX jobs came out. At this point, in my opinion, Warrior of Light is somewhere around like Fryevia's level. I actually think his ceiling is lower than Fryevia's. He's boosted by being light element. Like, I do think his element really helps him, but I like I think Fryevia's ceiling is actually higher than Warrior of Light's. I'm gonna get blowback on this one. I know I am. I'm gonna put him into A tier. Now, if we go look at his kit just a little bit here, let me tell you why I think Warrior of Light is really good and how we can improve. First of all, like a lot of the units that we've talked about so far, he hasn't got his master ability upgrade yet. This dude has light attack and light HP buffs coming, just like Engelbert has, which is going to be insane. And then his skills. Like, Warrior of Light, when he was god tier, it's because he was one of the first units in the game to have a hate generating skill that also did other really good things for him. Like, Rain was so dang good against magic back in the day because when he generated hate, he also got that magic shield. And you were like... Two for the price of one, baby. Well, nowadays, like all good tanks have that. All of them do now. 
He started that trend. He gave himself defense and spirit with 12 hate. This skill was overpowered back in the day, especially at a time when there wasn't a ton of defense and spirit penetration in the game. So that was really nice. He still has shields. He has self-healing. He has region. His limit break gives him protect and shell. He has dragoon sub if you want to splash that. Spellblade if you want to go anti-magic. He can do a lot. He's still really good. He's just not the dominating force that he was when he came out. Still, if Warrior Light's your guy, you're in a good spot. Now, the next one's really sad. The next one's really sad. Watch this. I'm going to open up this tier and I'm going to put, I'm going to rename D tier. Whoa. Whisper. What the? Hold on. Okay. Uh, error. I'm going to rename D tier into please God give me 120. That is now the name of the D tier because that's what Agrius is. You guys, I'm not even going to talk a lot about Agrius. She's a status effect queen. She needs some more ways of generating hate, like through a TP skill or something like that. I don't know what they're going to do with her 120 whenever she finally gets it. I'm just telling you, her ceiling is as high as any tank in this game if she can get a good 120 upgrade. Like, her status effects are insane. She's really, really tanky. Her kit's really nice. I'm not even going to bother looking at it right now, though. I actually think she's kind of even usable still today. Her kit's so good. But not having 21 levels is a big drop off. And then like, God, just give her a 120. That's it. Like, I don't want to say much more about Agrius because it hurts my freaking heart. I love that unit. She's amazing. I'm putting her right there. Okay, next up, Dwayne. Now, Dwayne, I'm going to slide Dwayne right up here into A. I know, like, when Dwayne, okay, let me tell you a story about Dwayne. There was a time when Dwayne came out that he was up here. Right, just in any tier list. DPS tier list. Oh, Dwayne's the best. Tank tier list. Yeah, Dwayne's up there. Uh, just general god tier list. Yeah, it's Dwayne. That day's not anymore. He has fallen off a little bit. Um, dark is not what it once was. Thank God. Black Rose Helena Dwayne is not like the only thing you have to be able to beat to be good at this game. Uh, but Dwayne is still a really good unit. However, let me tell you a little bit about what holds him back in my opinion. I'm going to open up his page here. He is held back by the fact that that his only hate generating skill is Swift Shadow. It's only five hate. It's move plus one plus five hate. Like this is not a very good support ability overall. Like yes, move plus one is nice for tanks so they can separate from you a little bit. Um, but five hate is only about two hits. And then they're onto the rest of your team. So you need to be able to deal with the enemy quickly. Luckily for Dwayne, the rest of his kit helps him deal with enemies quickly. He does a ton of damage. He has access to like AOE disable, armor crusher. He can heal himself with his limit break. He's a really, really good unit. And he, but he, in my opinion, is just barely a tank. Like I said, Dwayne is the is the bar. Like, if I think you're less of a tank than Dwayne, you're not a tank in my opinion. And since this is my channel and my tier list, well, that matters. My opinion matters a little bit. So, that's what I think of Dwayne. I think, like, I'm taught, like, I think as a tank, he's he's bottom of A, top of B. But Dark is, Dark is still really good. And I think Dwayne is an A tier unit. Just as a tank, his hate generation lacks for me in a big way. Okay, next up, the main character of the story, King Mont. He had the worst dad in the history of this game. And in my opinion, like, I think this is where you start to see a little bit of power curve in this game. Because what we've talked about so far, like, I've told a story with all these units so far about how, like, they were really good and then they fell off and then they got buffed and they're kind of good again. And Engelbert is, like, borderline S tier right now. But, like, you have units like King Mont, who is just so dang good. Now, I want to look for him. I want to go over to his skills here and look at him before I grade him. He has the master ability already. He has AoE resistance 15. His skills, like... Check out how good this is. He has five hate, just like Dwayne does, from a support ability that also gives him defense and HP. That's insanely good. He could also give himself more move and jump. He can give himself agility, attack, like accuracy, all this kind of good stuff. Then, in his main job, he also has um, Proclamation, which is a 12 hate buff that increases agility by 12%. He's a speedy dude for a tank, and he can generate hate both from a support ability and from his main job, which lets you run him however you want. Not to mention, this dude's limit break 
is really good. Now let me talk to you about what holds him back a little bit. His sub jobs, you can run whichever one you want, but like Ninja kind of sucks on him and Nightblade gives you double resist, which is good sometimes. But other than that, the rest of them like stun blades nice. It's a cheap skill that can stun and that's kind of cool. Like Archlord gives him a break and a region he can cast on people. His, su his sub jobs aren't very good. Like King Mott is held back by his sub jobs, but his main job is amazing. It's super good for a tank, including good for PvE with a slash resistance debuff. So I really like King Mott. It puts me in a weird spot over here. Um, I'm going to put King Mott. I, guys, I actually think Engelbert. Okay, I'm going to put King Mott as an S tier tank. He, he lacks a major weakness, in my opinion. And if, if you pull King Mott and like that's your guy... You can splash this dude into like almost any element, I think, and he can hold his own. With the right gear, with the right vision cards and all that, this dude can do it for you. He's especially good at physical tanking. He's not bad at magic tanking. Like, he can do it for you. This guy can make it happen. He can be really, really fast. I like King Ma as a tank a lot. I think he is marginally better than Engelbert. If Engelbert wasn't trashed here against magic, Engelbert would be a better tank than King Mott, in my opinion, but Mott's speed gives him the edge. Okay, next, Charlotte. Now we're seeing the power creep coming, in my opinion. I think Charlotte is literal top tier tank. Like, she gave Lightning so much. Lightning is so lucky to have this girl. Let's look at her kit a little bit right here. Let me try and sell you on Charlotte. So first of all, her master ability, she has the, the Lightning element buff. She also has spirit and HP. Really, really nice for a tank. Then her skills, she has, let me tell you which ones I like, which ones I don't like. Noble Heart, that's more spirit and more HP. So you can already see she's going to be really, really good at um, magic tanking. Just, just you can tell that already, just how much spirit she can get. Then she can get Thief Lords amazing. Move plus one and agility 12% is awesome on a tank. It lets her be fast. It gives her more moves so she can separate from your team. So your team's not getting murdered by AoEs. I know a lot of people are in love with Protector's Pride. I actually think it's not any good. Um... Like spirit and debuff resist, spirit and defense debuff resistance is not good against penetration. It's only good against attacks that debuff you. I think you see a lot more penetration in the game than debuffs. Therefore, I don't love this. I think you run on her noble heart thief lore almost all the time, or you sprinkle in the others when you need to. Uh, she has okay, let's talk about her hate generation. Let's talk about her hate generation. Attract wall is really nice. Kind of like okay, so here you go attract wall 12 hate really cool Then she gets defense and spirit debuff resistance 50% So let me talk about this if you stack this With this she has 100 I've already said I don't like protectors pride because most of it is penetration Not debuffs when you're talking about deep like yo know, spirit pin and defense pin This does give you sort of like well at least I get 50 Anyway, and her AI loves to use this on her first turn. It gives her 12 hate, and then against units that can de you know, debuff, she'll only get half debuff, so I think that's fine. Then, let me talk about Glorious Armor. How good is this skill? Like, how good is this skill? First of all, she gets Defense 20, Spirit 20 for three turns for herself. Awesome. She gets Protect and Shell, 25% damage cut to both, and Region. But, like, what? Charlotte with this skill on is a god-tier tank. In Limited Guild Wars, which was a map with a lot of space where Charlotte had plenty of time to cast all her buffs, this is who I ran to beat the light meta. Because I was like, look, I got, like, defense and spirit for days. I don't care if you sprinkle in a summer kill phase, something like that. Charlotte, like, this skill is OP. I don't know how to describe it any more than that. Like, Glorious Armor is an OP tank skill. It's it's broken. Then, she has debuffs. She has an all-attack resist buff if you want to run that on an extra long map. Knight of the Sacred Shield gives her a elemental resist buff if you want that. Monk Sub gives her access to some more damage options. Thief makes her good in PvE as a, time, uh, a steel timer. And then her Limit Break also is a 40 defense and spirit buff for herself. 40 freaking 40 so even if she's already cast this it'll override it and give you 20 more it's insane i think charlotte is one of the best tanks in the game 
and she's good in an element lightning that really lacks a healer but she doesn't really need one. Region and all of her buffs, I think you'd keep her alive, and Lightning has so much damage. Typically, your team has finished off the enemy with Cloud, Ibarra, Frederica, something like that. You're cleaning up. I think Charlotte is an S-tier tank. And now, we get to Joom. And like, look, I'm a Joom simp, so I'm just gonna put her up here. Um, now, hold on. Let me, let me clarify a little bit here. I've only used Joom for a day and a half. So it's a little bit hard for me to do this. I'm gonna put her right now. She feels like somebody in between Charlotte and King Mon. Um, I'm waiting to see like if she is sucks against anything. I've Like I said, you only have so many swings in this game every day. So I've only been able to swing with her one time in Guild Wars. I haven't seen what a Guild Wars defense with her does yet. I've only been able to use her in Arena for, you know, like about 15 to 20 runs using my pots. She has performed at an S tier for all of that. Let me give me a little more time before I call her the best tank in the game. But I do think it's interesting that my three favorite tanks in this game are the newest tanks that we have. I think that is a little bit of power creep, and I especially think that power creep has Hurt Whisper the most, because her, her design just isn't up to what the game kind of is right now, where I think theirs is. And then I really think there's not a huge drop off between like bottom S, top of A. And there you go. So I know anytime I do a tier list video, I'm gonna get some uh, some good, some, some real uh, spicy comments in the chat. This is where I think the game is right now with tanks. This is my state of 2022, January tier list for War of the Visions tanks that are UR units. Wow, that's a long title. Okay, let me know what you think, guys. I, uh, I get nervous when I do tier list videos. These are like the comment sections that I probably get the most nervous to read. So hit me with what you got. I'm ready. I'll catch you next time. Peace.